I'm Sinclair. And I'm Miles. This is iRevivus. Come on in. All right, so here we've got our chalkboard wall we use for shopping lists and just nice messaging. Um, and then we've also got some storage baskets up here, um, you know, some overflow bathroom stuff like makeup and whatnot and uh, some more coffee related items for the morning time. Next we've got our oversized deep kitchen sink. Uh, it comes in perfect handy for when we're traveling. We can kind of use it as a catch-all for certain things that like to fly around. Um, then we've also got the faucet that comes out and can move around, which we can also use as a double for an outdoor shower or rinse if we want to. So our countertops are all butcher block. We actually got this portion from Miles' dad's garage. So um, we were able to reuse it and we just used, we sanded it down to you know bring life back into it and then sealed it with a food grade mineral oil. So we can actually use it as a butcher block. Um, and then for the other side, we just matched the best we could what we could buy from Home Depot. So we've got some of our uh, fresh herbs here. They don't love the heat, but um, yeah. We've got some chives, some sweet mint, um, just a random little succulent that managed to get in there. All right, so we've got our 55 gallon uh, fresh water tank in here along with you know, some cleaning supply storage. And we've got a 40 gallon gray tank that's mounted outside underneath the bus. Um, all of our water is run off of an electric pump. So also in our kitchen, we've got more um, storage here underneath the cabinet for cleaning supplies and paper goods. And then we've also got quite a large oversized drawer. Um, it kind of functions as a junk drawer as well as our silverware drawer and where we put our bungees when we're not driving. So here we've got our three quarter sized electric fridge. Um, it works great for us. The size is perfect for us to kind of stock up and go off grid if we want to do that. Um, the only real thing to be prepared about if you're thinking about putting one of these in your own conversion is uh, items will inevitably come out. So after you've driven for a while, if you open it, stuff will fall out. <laughs> And then up here, we've just got our dry goods and some pantry items that we can easily take down in here. So in our bedroom, we've got lots of storage. All of the overhead cabinets are miles. And under here, we've got two very large um, pull-out drawers that I've got all of my clothing in. So in our bedroom, we have our projector here. Um, we did a DIY projector screen that rolls down in the front of our bed. Uh, it works great. We've got a Roku so we can stream all of our favorite apps and I believe it can get up to 50 inches the screen size of the projector So we have used it a few times for movie nights outside of the bus So we were able to get a queen-sized mattress back here uh, The same size we were used to sleeping on at home We built it up so not only can Kona and all of us get on it But also we've got additional storage all underneath and um, we situated it this way so that when we pull up somewhere, we have the option of opening the handicap doors and getting in all the views. So here we've got the handicap doors. We kept them fully functional and we just added a nice mosquito net to, you know, just block out the bugs so we can open it up and enjoy whatever view we've, we've gotten to. And here we've got our 12,000 BTU heat and air uh, mini split unit. Our condenser sits on our back porch and it works great. Um, we don't run it off of the solar. It just sucks a little bit too much energy. We could probably get um, maybe an hour worth of runtime off of our solar, but we do have a generator. So we just hook this up to the generator directly and it cools down the bus fairly quickly. So we bought our bus on Facebook Marketplace. Um, we paid $3,800, we got a really good deal. Uh, it was in some bad shape, but then we, you know, we did all we could to renovate it and make it our little home. Uh, we spent 10 months converting our bus. Uh, we had the plan for a year, but we sped things up so we could get out of our initial lease and just hit the road and enjoy this country. 
So I grew up with my grandpa being my tutor as far as woodworking. So I have carpentry experience, especially with cabinetry. Um, but other than that, we had to learn everything, electrical, plumbing. Um, so it was a big to do, but we got it done. And it's very informative, especially YouTube videos that pretty much show you how to do everything. <laughs> Yeah, we both just really knew that we wanted to be traveling. We took a short road trip in a Toyota 4Runner that I had at the time. And ever since, we just knew that we wanted to be, you know, self-sustainable and just on the road as much as possible. When we initially decided that this is the path that we wanted to take, I changed my occupation and um, got a remote job doing social media for different clients around the country. Um, so that's how I make uh, my income while we're on the road. And then uh, I do land surveying and AutoCAD drafting, so I fortunately can also work on the road. As far as during the build, we spent all of our money to purchase it and all the materials that we could, and then on every single paycheck we got, we dedicated an allotted amount to be able to continue our conversion without any stops or halts. And we just got lucky and saved and didn't have anything else come up, so we were able to finish it early. Yeah. So this is our closet. It's uh, L-shaped. I built it that way so we can keep our like hanging winter items in the back of the closet. And then this is the front of the L, which we can just have our quick items, button downs, and anything that hangs. So I, the construction of the ceiling, I tried to keep as simple as possible. We got this maple for the center beam just because we loved the grain look of it when we bought it. And then this is just uh, birch plywood quarter inch and I self put the grooves in it with a circular saw just an eighth deep and then we've stained it the same color as this on the ceiling and then Sinclair came over the stain with a whitewash so it gives it that vintagey kind of used look. Alright so this is our couch area there's storage underneath um, the foam, we actually reused an old mattress. We're about due for the new one that we have on our bed. So we cut our old mattress up to get foam for the couch cushion. Um, and then we ordered a Sunbrella fabric cover so it um, stays clean pretty well, all weatherproof. We could bring it outside and put it on the back deck if we wanted to. And then down here, this is Sinclair's personal touch. She custom made this little design with the frames, put it all together, painted it up nice and we love it. Our window situation, we tried to cover uh, the least amount of windows as possible. Obviously the bathroom and the fridge and behind the bed, um, we covered those windows, but we tried to keep most of the windows open because we love to see nature. And when we pull up to a spot, we love to see the views that we can do on either side of a couch or the kitchen or anything. Um, the cons to the windows is all the windows let in cold or heat, whether whatever the temperature is outside. So that is the only con that I can think of is the insulation. So um, we kept these little kind of bamboo blinds just because they cover enough to protect us or keep us privacy when we're at a spot, but we still can kind of see out of them and they fit our vibe. Okay, so this is our electrical cabinet. Uh, we have a 12 volt, 400 amp hour battery, a 3000 watt, 12 volt uh, pure sine wave inverter. Um, we got a DC fuse box and we have our solar charge controller, which is 12 volt, 60 amps that uh, is powered by 700 watts of solar on the roof. And then this is our AC breaker box. Yep, and then we have a changeover switch that's just inside the closet here to switch from shore power to um, the inverter power battery. Okay, so for our lights, we have a 12 volt um, LED light strip here, color changing, goes to the music or any sound with a switch over there. We have two 12 volt uh, puck lights under here and two under the storage in our bedroom area. Um, we didn't use too many light because we didn't want to super bright in the bus during the nighttime so people could see inside but it is just enough to where we can still do everything and see without uh, any problems and then during the daytime we don't have any lights on we kept the windows so that we could have as much natural light as possible so this is our bathroom area we got the full shower 
Uh, we did the stone tile on the bottom and the cedar wood all around the top for the look of it because we love that look. So right now we just have a cassette toilet. Uh, we're saving up to get a compost toilet, which will be better for the environment, obviously, and uh, more practical for our usage. Right now we empty it probably once a week. And with the composting, uh, you can get up to like a month without emptying. So that's our goal in the future. Okay, so this is our max fan up here. It, that also runs on 12 volt. Uh, it's great. We positioned it here so that we can get exhaust for both the bathroom and the cooking element when we're cooking. And also if we just run it uh, in the middle of the day, it kind of sucks up and creates a nice breeze through the windows being open. So definitely a good purchase. All right, so this is our stove oven combination. We have the three burner on top and the oven, double oven on the bottom. We love the cooktop. The oven itself is a little finicky on the temperature, but it does get the job done for pizzas or french fries or whatever. Um, yeah, and we love it so far. Mainly, we use the cooktop though. And then for our cabinetry on the bottom under the stove, we have storage for pots and pans and a couple trays. And then on this side is all appliances and cutting boards like our rice cooker, some olive oil, a couple of cutting boards, a couple more of the bigger pans that we couldn't fit in here. And then right here is all of our cooking utensils, ladles, bamboo sticks, measuring cups, a couple other things. So this is the butcher block that we purchased to match this one. It's not exact, but it is as close as we could get. So, and we wanted to keep the continuity with the countertops. All right, so up front, we have kept as much as we could stock. We didn't come with a radio, but we replaced it with a head unit. I put in a, there was no airbag here, so I actually just cut in the speaker and the back end could fit in this little compartment. We installed a subwoofer under the seat. The seat itself is out of a Ford Transit. Um, there was only one seat to begin with and I like to have her sitting next to me when we're driving, so we threw in the double seat. And then up here, we have, it's all adventure storage, so everything we need to have fun and out in the woods or whatever. Up here is just kind of medical and hygiene stuff. Back here, it's hard to see, but that's a flue pipe, and this is our propane uh, water heater, instant. And in this front area, we built a little table with storage, which we keep our generator here just in case we need some immediate AC in the heat. So as far as difficulty goes uh, moving into a bus life, I'd say the hardest part is probably um, the lack of resources that you have. You don't have constantly running water. We have to refill unless we're plugged in. Um, same thing with the power. If it's a rainy day for three days in a row, our solar obviously isn't getting what we want. And um, parking, obviously, and moving from location to location. If you just have to go to the grocery store from a national forest, it's a pain in the butt to move the entire bus to the grocery store to get a couple of things. So we yeah. do our best to restock, but other than that, you know, that's just some of the things in this lifestyle that can be a little more challenging. You're very vulnerable mm -hmm. to everything, weather, animals, wildlife, you name it, you're exposed to it. Mm -hmm. But rolling with the punches. Yeah, yeah, you gotta roll with the punches. <laughs> Yeah, living in the bus hasn't changed much for us relationship-wise. Um, prior to moving into the bus, we lived in a small apartment. We both still had remote jobs, so we were around each other a lot anyway. Um, the only thing I'll say is we do, you know, you have to put an effort into finding time for your own, you know, activities and things that interest you so you don't lose yourself in it all, kind of. Mm -hmm. You have to um, find time to get in your own head and have your own mental space uh, just to, you know, a good balance on life. You can't always be next to the same person, but it's nice to. Yeah, it is nice to be. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is our front door. We originally had the bifold door and we took that out because one, our electric uh, motor up top that was operating it was uh, malfunctioning and we also liked the ability to have a regular handle and a deadbolt on it for security. So this is our little fold down table. Uh, we like to use it when we're camping because we can set our cooking stuff out here instead of having to walk in and out of the bus continuously and it's just a nice little 
thing to have outside when you're camping. So these are our, originally our handicap doors. Now it is our garage doors for our storage under the bed. So when we open this up, we have full storage under here. We have a bunch of tools down there. It's a ladder to get onto our rooftop deck and then some laundry items and stuff. So it's super easy. All right, so this is our back deck. It's uh, four feet wide. Um, this is our uh, mini split condenser, the outside unit. And we have two propane tanks next to the AC unit with a changeover switch. So if one runs out, the other one will kick on automatically and we don't have to worry about coming out here at all. And we got the bike strapped down, two camp chairs, and that's it. So all of our lights, we changed to LED from the original halogen. They're much brighter, people can see us better, and we just like the look of it better. So every single light and all the clearance lights have been changed to LED. All right, so this is our 120 volt, 30 amp shore power plug when we are at a campground or any location, boondockers are welcome. Then we have our water inlet tank. This is our water fill and a custom thing because these actually leak. So if you cut a hole, you can continue and put your own thing in there so it doesn't leak. This is our 40 gallon gray water tank. We have a big ball valve to drain it and actually spin so when we come to the dump station, we can spin it out, blow it out into the dump thing, and then spin it back when we're driving so it's not sticking out. All right, so this is our ladder that we keep in the storage in here to get on our rooftop deck. Uh, we decided with this type of ladder because uh, actually we watched a Tio Aventura van video and they had somebody in the middle of the night climb up their attached ladder. So I was like, that ain't gonna happen to us. We're getting this guy. And then we set it right here and we can get right on the roof deck. All right, so this is our rooftop deck. It's seven and a half feet wide by eight feet long. Uh, it's a great little chill spot to hang out on. As far as the materials, we have two four by fours cut at an angle on the side, and then we have a couple other ones, and these are mounted to PVC lumber. And the reason we did that is because we didn't want any wood contacting where the water might sit. So the under supports starting here, there's four of them and they're all PVC lumber. So we got two, they're actually residential solar panels. They're 350 watts each. Uh, they fit perfectly and they just were a better option for us than getting a bunch of 100 watt panels. The best advice I have for converting a schoolie or a bus is just get your hands dirty and do it. If it's something that you want or if it's a dream or goal of you, yours, just go for it. I mean, the only thing you can do is fail and maybe try again, but you know, we, we did the same thing. We just went for it and we saved our money and we, now we're, you know, living other people's dreams. That's what they say. I mean, it's our own life, obviously, but we get to explore the entire country and take the comfort of our home with us. Yeah. We get to sleep in our bed every single night. <laughs> yeah, you're never gonna have it all figured out. You're never gonna have answers to all the questions there's gonna be issues that arise but you just kind of figure it out so go for it and the rest will fall into place thank you so much for coming on this tour with us you can follow us at irie underscore vibus on instagram and the links will be in the description